I'm telling you, that girl's as hot as the day I met her. Take a look at that ass. Yeah? Is that a fine piece of work or what? Ah, uh, come on, man. Don't you know it's bad form to tell someone that his sister's ass is hot? Because if I say no, then I'm lying. But if I say yes, then I'm just a perv. Oh, yeah. This was a long time coming. Do you guys remember Air Gear? No? Well, I don't blame you. Air Gear is one of those blinking you miss it anime. And when a little 14 year old me was scrolling through Netflix looking for something to watch, there it was with all its glory. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hello guys and gals, how you doing today? I would like to thank you for clicking on this video and, and for today's video, I'm just going to ask, do you remember Air Gear? If you don't know, that's okay. Air Gear is an anime slash manga series that was written by O Great. If you don't know who O Great is, I made a video about, you know, top five slept on black characters. He's in that list. He made Tojin Tage. Go watch that video. And published by Weekly Shonen Jump on November of 2002 and had its final chapter on May of 2012. But 10 years of it being publicized during a time where anime was starting to get its footing on the Western world. That's where I ask, what is Air Gear? In Air Gear, we follow the story of Itsuki Manami, aka Iki, aka a baby face. That's his gang name. And his journey from being some no name gang member to become the king of the underground AT war. Iki stays with his adopted sister, Rika, Minkan, Rigo, and Umi. And other than the sexual shenanigans they get into, they're all a loving bunch. <laughs> but one day, while waiting on the edge of the city, Iki waits to get a glimpse of Simka. Being inspired to reach the sky, Iki sets out to get his own pair of ATs. So making his two best friends Kazumiya and Oniri, then later recruiting Buncha and Agito slash Agito, I'll talk more about them in a bit. And if you're a manga reader, they add two other members that being Emily, Kazuya's love interest, who joins them when they were down a member. Although she's not the most skilled in the team, she always gonna fight no matter what. Other than her, I'ma butcher his name, Yayo joins, but acts more of the team manager slash tickle for Agito slash Akito. And with that cast of characters, they form the team no guess, Kogorasamaru. That's a long name, try to say that eight times fast. In this world, they were able to invent super high-tech rollerblades called ATs. That's short for air tricks. And with those bad boys, you could get to school faster, or you could hop around skyscrapers breaking Newton's laws of physics. And the crazy thing is that anyone could buy a pair in this war and buy custom parts to make your own city level destroying moves. And in this war, while you buying ATs, you could actually form storm bridal teams. That's what they're basically called, that battle each other. And making a storm bridal team, there is a rank system. You start off in F class, obviously, and you could slowly climb your ranks up to S class. While you're in F class, you can only do races to rank up. But once you rank up, the matches get more crazy. To actually rank up, you're going to have to win three battles with an equal team. Or win one time against another team that's actually higher ranking than you. And how does one start a battle? Well, that's what we call parts war. And there's two ways to start a parts war. Either you can place your team's emblem over another team's emblem, starting a whole uh, gang warfare over here, or you could go on Reddit and call out a team. But once you start a parts war, you're going to have to place a bet. Either parts for your ATs, money, territory, or even your team's emblem. But once you do that, if you lose, you have to disband your team. I know that sounds a little too crazy, but there is a loophole. You can actually remake the team, but you're gonna have to start from the beginning again. So, if you were rank A and you got B, you have to start back at rank F if you want to reform that team, but it has to be a different name. So, with a shonen manga with 357 chapters, you would think that the anime would have matched the chapters. Well, you'd be wrong. The anime only had 26 episodes, and where the anime ends, that's where the story basically starts. And yes, let's talk about this shitty ending. When I was watching Iki getting hyped up to make that 50 person jump, to prove that he's the next Sky King, I was so, I was so hyped to watch that. I was so hyped to be like, let's go, let's go. I was basically like that meme from Toy Story 2 when Woody was watching his old shows and he was just like, come on, what's the next episode? And then at the end when Iki manages to land that jump, I was ready, I was so ready to see what happens next. And then this happened. Ringo, you see that? I'm a genius. And I've got superpowers too. Oh. <laughs> right. Hey yo, what the fuck? Bro, what the 
But when I tell you how flabbergasted I was knowing that there was no season two after this trash ending, I never felt this type of betrayal since Matt Hardy hit Jeff Hardy with the steel chair. But why didn't it get a season two? Well, if I would have to guess, it's most likely had to do with DVD sales and viewerships. And since it was the early 2010s and watching anime at the time was harder than finding your dad at the milk store, I can see why season two never happened. But other than the first season covering the beginning parts of it, they also dropped two OVAs, OVAs, but I'll talk about that after this. So the two OVAs kind of require you to read the manga, with both being at least 100 chapters ahead of the main story and it's being a big shift in the change between the anime and the OVA. The first anime, I mean the first OVA has to do with Iki going into parts war against Ringo, his love interest. Now if you watch the original anime, you can already tell that these two have like a, the love interest, you know. She likes him, he likes all type stuff. But once you watch the OVA and haven't read the manga and what's happening, it's kind of confusing on why all this is happening, especially since they added two new characters. But this is one of my favorite parts war in the story. Hell, I even did a reaction to both of these OVAs back in the day. If you want to watch that, I'm going to leave a link in the bottom in the description. You can click and watch that. But, but Ringo vs. Iki has a lot of death and hype behind it. With Ringo not wanting Iki to go against the Sleeping Forest gang and starting a war, and you feel the pressure within the fight. And when Iki activate that fake regalia that was switched out in the beginning, and then all of a sudden summoning the 100 Grim Reapers, it's still one of my favorite moves. Visually, that attack was really amazing. I highly recommend you watching the OVAs once you caught up to it in the manga because it is crazy. The shift in budget that the OVAs had compared to the anime is such a big difference. And I always wanted the anime to get that type of of increase of budget and like like how stylized it was as for the second ova that's what iki and kogorasamaru get sucked into the metaverse and goes up against the original members of sleeping forest and this is what the anime needed to have parts rule like this shows the creativity side of it in this second ova this is when you get to see basically everyone in kogorasamaru be mvps in their own way instead of like Again, comparing it to the main anime, it was mostly Iki, Buncha, and Agito being the true MVPs in the fight. But in this OVA, it really demonstrates how OP and crazy the rest of the gang are. And even in this OVA, it has a little story behind uh, Agito. But let's talk about him for a second. Agito is a Regalia kid with a split personality disorder, with the other personality named Agito with a G. And Agito is more of the and the kind of night and day. Akito is more of the rude, loud mouth, cussing dude, and then Agito is the, the innocent, uh, kind of sus little boy over there. And they have a third personality, but that's manga only named Lin. But Lin is only manga exclusive. So if you want to know more, like this video. And you know what? I'm a, I'll do more Air Gear videos like this, breaking down characters, because Air Gear is one of my favorite animes slash mangas. And I do wish that this the show gets more of a community because it's a really hidden gem. So while we watching Air Gear, it was really fun. And yes, there was some stuff you know we watching didn't hold up as for today's standards like characters like the, te the female teacher you know how she's <laughs> how she's portrayed in the story
but something I do want to talk about is the artwork that Old Grey put into this and some of the secret reviews within the story like for example this is a spoiler alert. if you're planning to watch this after this you might even want to stop now go watch the show and then come back so you can understand what's going on so ready here we go this is Sora no not that one he was a formal member of Sleeping Forest one of the biggest Storm Rider teams out there in Japan. And then unfortunate events happened that made him handicapped. So within the story, the main plot, this one. He was a former member of Sleeping Forest. In the first season when he was introduced, he seemed pretty cool, right? You know, he was the former Sky King talking to the new Sky King. And you know, you know, he was telling him some cool stuff. You know, he was basically hyping him up saying like, you're gonna be next and I can't wait to see it. Being a supportive character, but then, a couple hundred chapters later, Sora's brother shows up to the story and starts wrecking shit. Even two S ranks and Kazu being an A rank couldn't stand a chance with this dude. And then boom, Sora shows up to the fight and gets up from his wheelchair. Like, what the fuck? And I don't know, Air Gear will always be in my top five. And the type of nostalgia I get from watching Air Gear is like watching Fooly Cooly or Kill a Kill. It's a really wacky show that takes itself that doesn't really take itself too seriously and it has some really unique designs and I like the idea of it. And speaking about Fully Cooly, did you hear about the, the two new seasons they added? Uh being Fully Cooly Grunge and the other one? Can't wait for that. But I feel like Air Gear doesn't get the hype and love it deserves. And you know, there was that other anime that came out that everyone around me that watches anime was telling me like, oh, this could be like Air Gear, this could be, it's the skating one, I forgot its name. But when I was watching it, I kind of got a little vibe off it, but it wasn't really anything too interesting. But what can I really say about Air Gear is that give this anime a watch. It's kind of a breath of fresh air, no pun intended. From the stuff that was out at the time, I really hope this underrated gem one day gets the love and respect that they, it actually deserves and maybe bring it back for a second season. That wouldn't be too crazy. Hell, they did it with Shaman King and some other anime. So why can't we get this one? If you're a fan of Air Gear, let me know down in the comments. Let's, let's start a community. So what do you guys think? Are you going to give this anime a chance? And are you a fan? Let me know down in the comments. Let's have a discussion. If you want me to make more videos about Air Gear, because I can and I would love to make videos about Air Gear. And if anything, I might actually do an Iki discussion, talking about his character and what his power sets and, and all this. But that's gonna be it for the video, guys. If you guys like the video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to get some galopi in your life. And let me know who's your favorite Stone Rider team. I'm a Kogo Rasamaru guy all day. And uh, yeah, until the next one, peace.